And now, here is the news from Scotland. When they read the news in Glasgow, it's in English, not Scots. If the Scots did use their own tongue, the language of Robert Burns, it would sound something like this. Get in. In the next two or three minutes, the Space Shuttle Challenger will bring up for Cape Canaveral. The five astronauts will be in space for eight days. It's the tenth shuttle flight. The Preven of the Yeoman Bringe Packs, officially called Manet Maneuvering Units, carries space voyaging that muckle nearer the fantastic world of Buck Rogers. Snell winds he wrought havoc in all the westland airts of Scotland the day. Glasgow folk especially had a good wing broken lums to thole. And while the west chittered in the cold souk of the wind, the nor'east was smoored with cranruch and snow. And that's the news in Scotland the nicht. For me, good night. The Scottish tongue is one of the oldest in Britain. The Anglo-Saxon tribes who invaded England also settled in lowland Scotland as early as the 7th century. After the Norman conquest, many English refugees fled north and established English-speaking boroughs like Edinburgh throughout the lowlands. This was the beginning of Scots, a northern variety of English that might have become a separate language. Much of the distinctive vocabulary of the Scottish lowlands is now known throughout the English-speaking world. Words like bray for bank, burn for stream, glen for valley, loch for lake, wee for small and bonny for pretty. There's an old saying that Scotland was born fighting. generations, border wars between English and Scots kept the two kingdoms and their languages apart. Had Scotland remained a fully independent country, its language might have been as different from English as Swedish is from Danish. In its golden age during the 15th century, Scottish was the speech of kings and aristocrats and the inspiration of poets like Barber and Dunbar. You can still hear the Scottish tongue in pockets throughout the lowlands, and particularly in the northeast, in the country round the oil and fishing port of Aberdeen. One of the men who works down on the quayside is the fish filleter, Stanley Robertson. Well, I'm for your car filleter. If you were going to take fresh out to the sea and just cook them the way they were, it wouldn't be awfully pleasant because you'd have got sinine and nothing upon them. But if I get one of that fish, I take off a fan and off a scales and I cut all the flesh off of it. Because near who's way is going to like a fish of eye it is. So that's for the idea, I'm a filleter. Stanley Robertson's speech is full of typical Scottish vocabulary and pronunciation. Ken for no, bide for stay, and gang for go. He says a boot, hoose, and a wa, for about, house, and away. I really like to get a war for the fish who snoot into the country, to get a war beside the old castles, because from I was a bear and by bear doing a boot of these old castles, 
and you were able to transport your mind awah to the things that happened long ago. He's one of the last traditional storytellers, and he knows more Scottish folk tales and ballads than any man alive. The stories that have been told but I saw that tale in, in the country language. This is why I tell them that he handed in with the same tongue to the oral tradition. This is a story cried Jack in the Devil's Castle. A Bahaini Bach, many, many years ago, that lived an old woman and she bade now he caught her hussy. And she had three laddies. Our youngest laddie was called Jack. Now, the Jackie's Jew, he was a hard working chill. He kind as he would get up early in the morning and work, do the plowing, do all the work through the ferrum, and wouldn't go to his bed till late at night. But these two brothers was the most useless and laziest beckles you ever did see. They wouldn't do a hand's turn about the ferrum and they wouldn't help them with her. Another source of inspiration for the oral tradition of the Scots can be found in the Bachelors Club, Tarbolton. Every year, the birthday of Robert Burns is celebrated here by the literary and debating society founded by the poet. It's in the nostalgic recollection of Burns that lowland Scots, the language of his finest lyrics, still gladden Scottish hearts around the world. Tonight, Willie Ross will toast the immortal memory. Mr. Chairman and friends, I don't think there's any more daunting task can be asked of any Scotsman, and certainly not of an Ayrshireman, than that of proposing the immortal memory of Robert Burns. Before his death at the age of 37, it was Burns' achievement as a poet to shun the fashion for English and draw on a Scottish tradition that had become despised. He restored his nation's voice and gave Scots a new pride. He wrote nearly 350 songs. Songs that a quarter of them are masterpieces. Banks and braes, all lang syne. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody so sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. And they say we're tongue-tied as Scots when it comes to love. Don't you believe it? We've got burns to draw upon, and we can glory in the fact that he saved part of the language of Scotland, and he gave us this glorious treasury. It's almost equal with the name of Scotland. Gentlemen, I ask you to be upstanding and drink with me the immortal memory of Robert Burns. Robert Burns.